although the um, the suicide episode, I do say, very solid storytelling. Very good episode, I would say. Um, the most noteworthy thing to me, um, and I'm sure everybody else who is Seinfeld junkies like me, um, is that the suicide episode is actually um, the first on-screen appearance of Wayne Knight, who of course would go on to play Jerry's big arch nemesis uh, Newman. Never knew what Newman's full name was. He was always just Newman. But um, of course, this was only supposed to be just a one-time deal for for him. I guess the backstory was, um, you know, in this episode, they needed kind of like insert like somebody else into the building. Um, I, and I guess the more sort of point charge, you know, like, you know, because the person that they try to keep the most mystique to, like, more like mysterious, like, you know, you didn't, he was just on his own island, you didn't know what that world was, was, of course, Kramer. And I guess the best person to kind of, like, you know, pair this, you know, inside source to the main story, uh, you know, was for the pair of someone up in the, else up in the building was, which was someone's friend, someone who would, of course, you know, kind of give Jerry advice that put him in, the, in a, tough situation, of course, which Kramer would be, would be Kramer. So, they decide that, you know, that, that they need, like, a friend for Kramer in the building, like, especially for the story, someone who, like, you know, were basically, you know, they, was, 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 you know, enemies with Jerry, but also good friends with someone else familiar in, in, in the cast. So, um, they had already introduced um, Newman in the previous episode, The Revenge, where he was trying to kill himself. Uh, jumping off off of a, the roof of the building apartment, and they introduced him on screen. Um, so that was the backstory behind all all that, as to you know picking out the character Newman, which I will you know talk more about, of course, at the end with the um, uh, fun facts. So um, at the beginning of the episode, um, Jerry was with Elaine. Uh, Elaine was still eating a lot. You know they were going to go out to dinner. Elaine was going to have to fast for three days. She was having a an x-ray uh, for ulcers, but she had to fast for three days, which I could not do. Um, Jerry also mentioned some random thing about, like, you know, would it have a bad effect on someone's life to name a child um, Rasputin? Um, just some random little thing. that One of the first time they threw, like, something very little and random in there. Well... Another instance of like thinking of that would probably be in the um, in the tape when George was made that made that comment about you know um, if Jerry used that that material about about the big toe being the captain of the toes and then Jerry just tries to you know like you know throw it out there later when he was talking to Kramer uh, like, like one this is one of the first few times they still like had like some small detail at the beginning and then of course they 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 mentioned it again like, later on in the episode which we'll get to that later um, but then. Um, but then George uh, comes. Jerry meets him out in the hallway because he had to take out, out his garbage. Uh, so he tried to get George to do it, but George, you know, was like, say, pay me, give me two bucks. And then Jerry was no 50 cents. And while they're in the hallway, Jerry was um, was mentioning how, I mean, George mentioned how to Jerry, how he was getting ready to go to uh, the Cayman Islands. Um, and, um, you know, again, you know, George just lost his job, but he's saying, you know, what, what's this? You you lose your job, and yet you're still going on vacation somewhere. Do you, you need a break from getting up at 11 o'clock every day or something like, like that? Um, they're also start discussing uh, Drake's coffee cake. At the same time, Jerry's neighbor's girlfriend, Gina, comes out, um, who is Mediterranean, I believe she was. Um, and obviously, there was some type of, like, some type of interest between her and Jerry, but obviously no can do because Gina is dating Jerry's neighbor Martin um so they start discussing Drake's coffee cake uh but obviously of course it gets a little you know friendly and she even like you know rubs Jerry's shoulder uh but then Martin comes out puts his arm around Gina and Jerry's like hey how you doing he goes good enough and uh, before they and of course they're walking away Jerry's saying geez I can't help the fact she's sexy ain't she basically um and then um Jerry was sold that that garbage in his hand, places it in front of Kramer's door, and he knocks on the door and he walks away. So um, then in, in, back in back inside, they start discussing you know whether or not you know that was flirting or not. But then George mentions how he just realized he had a dream about um, about um, about Martin, about he was doing some type of 
stand-up comedy in some club in Maine. Um, and then he was saying about how he feels like, you know, he's, um, he's psychic and whatnot. Um, he, he was even a bit there where he said he knew he was going to be bald. And um, he said, but your fa- father's bald. But jo- George said, but, but it comes from the mother's side. And Jerry goes, well, your mother's bald too, even though we find out later when it introduced George's parents on screen wasn't the case. Although, originally it was true for his father. But of course, we'll get to that, of course, you know, another time. As um, John Randolph, who was originally casted as George's father, uh, was bald. But of course, when Jerry Stiller came on, he was not, not bald. Um, so then Elaine talks to him and they're going to just, you know, for the fun of it, since George's is interested in it, uh, taking her to one of her, um, her, um, psychic friends whose name was, um, it was, um, Rula, uh, her, one of her psychic friends. And, you know, just to, you know, you know, see if he really is psychic or not. So, um, um, so they go out to dinner later that night, though, Jerry wakes up to this banging on his door and it was Gina. Martin, apparently she tried breaking up with Martin, and Martin tried to take his own life with pills, and he falls to a coma. So Jerry goes to the hospital with, with them, um, and then that's where Gina starts expressing that, you know, she has always had thoughts about Jerry, and she was pushing Jerry to, you know, start, like, putting the moves on her right in front of Martin. But, of course, Jerry was uncovered by because although he wanted to, he's like, is this right or not? Because Gina was saying that she'd broken up with him. Um, next day, he talks to Kramer about it. Uh, of course, first off, Kramer mentions Newman as the one who told, um, who told, um, who told Jerry about, um, told Jerry, he asked Jerry if he heard about Martin. He said that he found out from Newman, and Jerry goes, oh, yeah, big mouth Newman, like, setting the stage for, you know, what's yet to come, this Newman guy we haven't seen on screen yet. Um. So, Kramer basically says, you know, you gotta be a man and just, you know, just realize that, you know, 24 hours, you know, it's not awake, you know, it's all, you, everything, all the stuff is gone. It, it's free will, basically. So, he takes it as, okay, I'm gonna go, go through with this fling with, 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 with Gina. Um, George, meanwhile, goes with Elaine two days after um, her, um, her ulcer um, x-ray, still hungry as ever, goes to see her psychic friend. Uh, whose daughter was watching along, picking her nose. Um, while George is having this discussion, first off, another fun fact here, she, uh, she asked him about, about the name Pauline, and George claims his brother once had a thing with a woman named Pauline, but we never meet this brother. George always treated like he was an only child. Um, also, um, Audrey, the girl who had the big nose and a nose job, she was mentioned also, but um, she also says that no chance that George came back with her. But in the midst of all this, Elaine starts arguing with uh, with Rolla because she was smoking a cigarette and she was pregnant. Now, of course, you know Elaine, of course, never wanted kids. She never seemed to care about kids. But in the, there's been sometimes in the earlier scenes where she's got a little bit of a heart and care for the well-being of others. Of course, this is also one of the first few times where Elaine, you know, mentions her hate, her disgust with people who smoke. So, while George is talking with, with Rula, who's also saying, you know, I don't know about this trip to the Cayman Islands, she says something bad's going to happen, but before George gets the information out, Elaine gets into an argument with Rula because of Rula smoking, while, again, she's pregnant. Finally, she gets sick of it, and she kicks them both out, and uh, George never finds out what's going to happen on this trip. He's scared to go now. Um, so then he eventually, of course, would give the tickets to the Kramer, because he can't get an answer to figure out what's wrong. He doesn't want to risk his own life. Even though Kramer knows where he doesn't want to go, and he's fine with going. So Kramer's taking the risk instead. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, then Jerry and Gina obviously have, you know, start up a relationship. Um, Gina, I'll be honest, seemed to be very pushy about things. Seemed a little controlling, you know, and, and, and such. So it's like, she at times it was like you you kind of felt like you know okay you know this woman really is not right for Jerry yes as good looking as she is she's very pushy she's very needy she's kind of controlling um you know she wanted you know she wanted Jerry to, 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 to and this is all Jerry I mean even though he had desires she was the one pushing real hard for it like she wanted Jerry to put the moves on her in front of Martin she wanted Jerry to walk her to a cab um but she was afraid because like you no know, people seen him in the building yet. So, of course, he finally agrees, but as he's taking it out, here's when we first see Newman on camera. He sees Jerry, you know, taking uh, Gina to, um, downstairs to the cab, 
And of course, now he's threatening to tell Martin when he wakes up from his coma. Um, and of course, meanwhile, then then later back at the hospital, um, J- Elaine and Jerry and George are sitting there um, talking about the whole thing, even though Elaine's so distracted because she's so hungry and she has no results yet on her ulcer test. Um, Kramer tells them, of course, um, Jerry that Newman's with visiting uh, Martin. Uh, Jerry goes upstairs um, and basically, you know, he's trying to, you know, find some way out of it. And then he um, pulls out a Drake's coffee cake and starts eating it. And Newman says he loves Drake's coffee cake. And he basically, finally, after going back and forth, he 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 tells Jerry he won't say anything to Martin as long as Jerry gives him his extra Drake's coffee cake, which he, you know, accepts and gives it to him. Uh, there is a scene, though, where um, George and um, Elaine are sitting on a are sitting on on the bench still, but then there's a woman sitting next to him. That woman in real life apparently was Jason Alexander's real life mother. Um, but while of course you know Elaine's trying to bother the doctor, is trying to get results on her tests. George sees Rula's daughter and follows her, and then Rula was actually about to be taken to um, to um, you know give birth give birth to her child. Um, and George is still trying to get the answer about, about his trip, but it was too late. But he, instead of you know getting that answer, George ended up assisting in the birth of the child. Um, and then of course Elaine though storms in to, to see the guys. We'll see you know uh, Jerry and Kramer. Um, and um, but then uh, Elaine storms in and sees the Drake's coffee cake, and she's so hungry, so she wrestles Newman, and Newman says if if Jerry. Um, doesn't stop Elaine. He's going to tell her. He's going to tell Martin. So as so, uh, Elaine succeeds in ripping out the coffee cake out of Newman's hand. But as she, she does that, Martin starts to wake up. Um, George still fall, and then at the same time, chaos. George is following um, Rula to uh, the to the room to give the birth. Uh, he's like begging, "What, what is this? A plane crash? This and that." He kept the, the biggest fear. He kept saying, "Was lupus? Is it lupus?" And then back in in the other room, um, Martin's like like gra- grabbing Jerry by the neck, and as Newman's like giving him all the details. But while Kramer's trying to wrestle um, um, Jerry to be free from Martin, he's also yelling at Martin because Martin borrowed a vacuum cleaner off of him. They never gave back. Now. Kramer also is saying here that you know his mother is going to be coming to visit him. He's going to get on about the carpets, but yet we never see Kramer's mother until the switch in season six, I think it is season six. Um, and Kramer said he's not seen his mom in five years in that episode. So there's there's a little bit of a continuity error there. Um, meanwhile, Elaine's just sitting there enjoying that Drake's coffee cake and just finally getting some food inside her. Um, and then in the last scene, um, George is basically like almost like a repeat of, of the opening scene. Except like you know, a lot of things have changed. This time, George is eating left and right, and then Jerry's like, you know, you know, what are you doing? We're going to be going, going to dinner again. Um, and um, and then George just said, starts talking about how he thought it was disgusting in the childbirth, and then he said, by the way, you'll never guess what they named the child, Rasputin, which the name that Jerry was discussing with Elaine at the beginning of the episode while she was eating. Uh, they're getting ready to go out to um, for dinner again because Elaine was going to have to start fasting again, which I don't know if it was because you know she had eaten before she got her results or what the heck happened. Um, Kramer though had returned from um, from um, his trip from the Cayman Islands trip, um, and um, he basically had a great time. He there was a lot of things that George missed out on big time because um, they were shooting apparently the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue at the hotel pool. Um, but, um, but he basically saw, you know, people skinny dipping and whatnot, and he was on the blanket next to L. McPherson, and they played backgammon, um, and, you know, he had a blast. But he said that, um, of course, you know, George disappointed about all this he didn't go because he was worried, but then Kramer said that the worst thing that happened to him was the one of the days he was there, he did step on a jellyfish and got stung. That's probably what Rula was warning him about, and he's like, of course... And also there, he Kramer sees on the on the dining on the dining room uh, on the kitchen table. I'm sorry, uh, Jerry got an invitation to a housewarming party for Martin and Gina. He woke up and they moved in together. So they got back together. Like I don't know, did Gina all of a sudden like you know was she embarrassed you know because she cheated on her boyfriend? You know she had broken up with him. Why she got back together with them again? I don't know. Like I said, 
she just came she definitely came across though as like a very you know needy person and controlling everything so I guess since you know Martin tried to kill Jerry or whatnot I don't know why it just go back together but they're getting ready to go out to dinner again um and that's that um and that's the episode of the suicide uh, of course um the other fun facts well first off um getting back to um to Newman um Wayne Knight also mentioned that, of course, this is meant to be just, just a one-off appearance in this episode. Uh, and also, like, the backstory behind the character Newman was supposed to be a little bit different than it was, even though, to me, it wouldn't make much, much of a difference, except for, of course, one thing. Um, but originally, the idea for the character of Newman was that he was supposed to be uh, the son of the landlord, and the, known as the building Snitch, um, where Jer- in the part of the complex where Jerry and Kramer lived. Um, as time went on, of course, I mean, which was basically how it was implied, you know, it was never mentioned in the episode that Newman was the landlord's son. Um, but basically, that was the whole idea, about, original idea behind the character. But as Wayne Knight says, the son of the landlord thing kind of just dropped out after a while, and uh, building snitch just turned into pure evil, pretty much, as Newman was. Um, the other fun fact, of course, actually, was, um, well, two more. Um, the woman who played Gina, whose first name was also Gina, she actually originally auditioned for the previous episode, The Red Dot, but she auditioned to play Evie, um, the cleaning lady who George slept, um, George fooled around with on his office desk. Um, and also, at the end of the episode, where there was the, um, the invitation for the housewarming party. Apparently, there was an actual show that was kind of based off of Martin and Gina. So I don't know where that went with that, but yeah. And of course, also like I said, Jason Alexander's real life mother appeared as an extra um, in this episode as well, which I think was supposed to be George's mother. I don't know. I can't remember. You know what her? Or she was just a ra- random extra. I can't remember what it was. Um, but yeah. That's the suicide episode, and that's the first on-screen appearance of... Oh, oh, and of course, I can't forget this, of course. Uh, of course, it was mentioned, of course, when I did The Revenge, when um, Newman originally was an off-screen character in that. Um, but after um, Wayne Knight was basically you know, being told he's going to be a reoccurring character, um, Larry David, being a stickler for details, um, had once the show went to syndication, uh, he let, um, he let um, Wayne Knight record his voice to replace Larry David's in the Revenge episode off-screen, um, just so, you know, Wayne Knight could always say he was Newman, basically, just so you know, say that was the case. But I forgot, almost forgot about that. That was a very important fun fact. But, yep, again, that's the suicide, and again, the first on-screen appearance of Newman! Good episode. Um, what are your thoughts on the suicide episode? Make sure your thoughts down in the comments section below. Be sure as always to slap a like on the video, subscribe for more content to come to my channel, and follow me on Twitter as well at DemandAirBoy93. Um, I believe the next episode is the the subway, I think it is. We'll talk about that when we get there. So until then, guys, I'm checking out. I'll catch y'all later. Have a great rest of your night, and peace out, everybody. No escape.